My name is Norm from the .NET team at AWS. In this video, we are going to talk about Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS for short, with .NET Core. ECS is a container orchestration service that supports Docker containers. Before we dive into deploying our .NET Core applications to ECS, let's take a look at how the ECS resources work together. First, there is the cluster, which is a logical grouping of our containers. The cluster then has container instances, which are EC2 instances that provide the compute resources for our cluster. Next, we have task definitions, which tells ECS how to run our container. This is where we declare how much memory and CPU for the containers. You can also set an IAM role to give your container AWS credentials to access AWS services. Then you can run tasks for your task definition. Running a task on a cluster is for transitory processes. That means when the process declared in the Docker build file exits, the task running the container will terminate. When the task starts up, it will download the Docker image from the container registry, whether that is Docker Hub or Amazon Elastic Container Registry, or ECR for short. Another way to run your containers is as a service. This is for things like web servers, where you want the task to run indefinitely. A service will run a declared number of tasks for it and will monitor their health. If any of the tasks fail, it will restart new tasks. Now, if our container is a web server, we probably want to tie all these tasks to a load balancer to provide one URL endpoint and spread the traffic across all of the tasks. The service will register the healthy tasks to the load balancer and will deregister them if any of the tasks become unhealthy. Once they are registered, the load balancer will take care of sending the traffic to the tasks running our container. AWS Fargate is a new technology for ECS that you can use to deploy your containers to ECS. With Fargate, you don't have to manage any EC2 instances, and the compute capacity will be auto-provisioned at launch time. When you launch your containers with Fargate, you reserve the amount of CPU and memory needed for your container and Fargate tasks. Take care of the rest. If you are not using EC2 instances, the cluster creation is simplified. All you need to do is specify a name for the cluster, and when you launch your Fargate-based tasks, provide the VPC configuration and EC2 security groups. If we look back at the ECS diagram we showed before with Fargate, that means that container instances disappear and is no longer our concern. With Visual Studio 2017 and the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, you can deploy .NET Core applications to directly to ECS. Let's go take a look at how you can do that. Here we are in Visual Studio 2017, and we have the AWS Explorer here again on the left. To get started with deploying, let's create a brand new project. I'm going to create one on the solution I've already set up. Say so add new project. And I'm going to deploy a .NET Core, ASP.NET Core web application. We're just going to call this our web front end. And we're going to say OK. And this is a web application. And we're going to take advantage of Visual Studio's Docker support and let it generate a Docker file for us. So push OK. And here is our project. This is just the standard project Visual Studio will create for us. And here we have is a Docker file that Visual Studio set up for us on how to actually build the Docker image. With that Docker file on there, that triggers the HTTP toolkit to know you can deploy it to AWS. So if I right click, we now have the option to publish the container to AWS. Now here's where we start our wizard, and the deployment targets is where we can see how different options to deploy this. We could do it as a service, as a task, a scheduled task, or we could just push this as a Docker image to ECR and then later push it to a service. So this is a web server, we're going to push this as a service. And I'm going to leave this checked to save the default settings, and it's also going to set up my project for command line deployments afterwards. Next, we have to decide what cluster we want to launch this to and how we want to launch it. I'm going to use a brand new cluster today. We're going to call this demo cluster. And I'm going to use Fargate to deploy this, so I don't have to think about any EC2 resources when launching this. 
I just specify my CPU and memory, which I'm going to leave at the default, and my VPC and security groups that I want for that compute resources. So we're going to push next. And then we have to define the service for our web server. Here we can say how many instances of this service we want to run. Since we want to make sure this is highly available, we're going to create three tasks of that. So there's going to be three instances of my web application running in Fargate. We'll push next. And now we have three different tasks. We want to have them be using an application load balancer to spread the traffic across all of our different instances. So I'm going to configure that. We're going to create a brand new load balancer. I'm going to leave everything else to the default where it's going to create a target group called Web Front End, and it's going to say for all requests, send them to this target group. And our Fargate instances will be attached to that target group. And we must make sure that the health check is pointing to a valid URL within that container, because that's how it knows that the tasks are healthy enough to be added to our load balancer. So we'll push next. Next, we need to find the task definition for our application. We're going to create a brand new one. And this is where we can specify an IAM role that we want to use for our application. Our application isn't using any database services right now, but we can just set it to ECS demo to have it if we want to add access database services later. We could also specify any additional port mappings or environment variables, but the toolkit by default will detect this is a web application and open port 80 and set the production asynchronous core environment variable. With that, we'll just push publish, and that's going to begin our deployment process. So it's going to create our application load balancer. It's then going to use the Docker CLI to go and build our Docker image. Once that Docker image is complete, it's going to log on to ECR and then push our Docker image to ECR. And with that, it'll then create our service on our cluster. Now that'll take about a minute, so we're going to fast forward the video while that happens. Once the deployment is finished, the ECS cluster view comes up, which is available from the AWS Explorer. And if we can see here, we'll refresh. We have three tasks pending. These are our Fargate tasks that are currently being pending, and it's, the compute resources are being provisioned for those tasks. So this will take about a minute for those Fargate tasks to come online. So again, we're going to fast forward the video for those tasks to come on. Now we can see we have three running tasks, all running, serving our application. And we have one URL pointing to it. We can click on that, and we can see here is our web application that has been deployed. Now this was an example of how we could deploy a front-end application, but what if we also want to serve as a second app project for our web API projects? We can do that by creating a new project. Again, we'll select basement core application. We'll call this our web API. This time, we'll select web API project template. And again, we're going to have the Docker support enabled. And we can then just deploy that to our same cluster and to our same application load balancer. By doing that, we right click, publish container to AWS. Again, we're doing a service. We're going to select the cluster we just created. We're going to do it again as a Fargate and leave everything else at the defaults. We're going to create a brand new service, though. So this will be the second service running in our cluster. And maybe for this, we don't need as many tasks. Maybe for this one, we only need two tasks for it. We'll go ahead and push Next. And we'll configure that load balancer for it. We're going to select the same existing load balancer. And this time, we're going to create a new target group for our web API. And the path pattern is going to be slash API. So this means all requests that come in to our load balancer that start with slash API will go to this target group, which will be these Fargate tasks. Anything else is going to go back to our original web front end. And so this is how we can reuse the same cluster and same load balancer with different projects. But we must make sure that the health check is pointing to a valid place within that container. So we're going to use the default one in there, API slash values. Create, again, a new task definition for it. And then we can set a role for it. But we're going to leave everything else here at the defaults and go ahead and publish that. 
And this is going to go run that same deployment logic that we saw before, using the Docker CLI to build a Docker image and push it to ECR. We'll go ahead and fast forward this video while that happens. And now we can see back on our cluster view, we have our second task. And here we have those two tasks currently in the pending state. So we'll go ahead and fast forward the video while those tasks go into the running state. Now our web API has its two tasks up and running, and we can see we have our URLs down here. Let's go ahead and click that. And you can see that our web API was called on the same load balancer that our web front end is. If I go back and remove this part, we can see here we have both our web front end and the web API going to the same load balancer and use, reusing the same cluster. Now, so far, we've shown how you deploy web applications to ECS. But another feature that you can use is you can also deploy just console applications. This is a good way to do service applications, things that run in the background. Let's go ahead and create a new .NET Core console application. So on this, we're going to say Add New Project. We'll select Console Application from the .NET Core section. And we're going to create a console application that's going to go and list all of my S3 buckets. So let's call it Bucket Lister. And this is using S3, so I'm going to pull in the S3 NuGet package. Maybe this SDK S3. Now we have that NuGet package. Now I already have this code written, so let's go ahead and copy that out. Here's the code, very simple code of using our S3 client to go list our buckets and print them out to the console. And let's now deploy this to ECS. So I'm going to right click on that, and we need to enable Docker support for this. And we can do that in Visual Studio by saying add Docker support, which will generate our Docker build file. You can see in that Docker build file is when it's going to say, this is the process we want to run. Now let's select Publish Container to AWS. Now in this case, this is not a process that we want to run forever. We just want to run this process for the link it takes to list our S3 buckets. And that's when we would deploy it as a task. Now so far, we've shown deployments using Fargate. But let's go ahead and use a cluster that I already have that has some EC2 instances on there. So that we're going to select that cluster and choose the launch type as EC2. And so the VPC and all is going to be used by the instances that it's going to be deployed to. Go ahead and select next. And here we can specify its task configurations. We could specify to spin up multiple versions of this task, but for this case, we just want one task that's going to print out our S3 buckets. And we'll define our task definition. And we need to give it some memory that we want for this, a minimum amount of memory. We're going to say this is pretty small. It just needs 128 megs of memory. And we need to give it a task role to be able to access S3. So we'll use our existing role there. We're not going to be exposing any ports. I don't have any environment variables to set. So there's nothing you need there. I'm just going to go ahead and push publish. And that's going to, again, run our Docker build process to push that and then push this image to ECR. So this will take that minute, so we're going to fast forward the video while that happens. So here's our EC2 cluster view. Let's go look. Here's our task that we just launched. It's currently pending. This will launch pretty quickly because the compute resources are already available. It's the EC2 instance. In fact, if I refresh this, it's already run to completion. And we can see that if we go to stopped, we can see that task is already run. Now to go see the actual buckets here, I can actually go look at the console, and let's go to CloudWatch Logs. Go to the Logs view in CloudWatch. And you can see for every one of our ECS tasks up there, a log group was created. And all of the console write lines are automatically written to that. So here's our bucket lister, and then we'll look at the stream. Here's all of my S3 buckets there. 
So that's how you can get logging information from your, cluster, from your containers by using CloudWatch logs and writing to the console. Now one last thing I wanted to show you is in every one of our deployments, we always had the ECS tools defaults file that saved our deployment settings. And it also configured our application deployed to the CLI. In fact, if we go look at the csproj file, when we had that checked, this was added to each of our projects. And that means now if I go to the command line, I'll make that a little bigger, I can now type .NET ECS help, and there's those same deployment commands. So the same thing we did in Visual Studio, we can also do from the command line. So I could rerun the same deployment by saying .NET ECS deploy task, and I don't need to specify any parameters because everything was saved in that defaults file. And that will run, and it will rerun the same deployment logic that we did in Visual Studio. In this video, we learned how to use .NET Core with ECS to deploy container applications. Thanks for watching.